This video will make some simplifications of the secular determinant in the linear variational method for the case where we have a basis set with two basis functions. So as in the previous video, the linear variational method is a method for solving the approximate energies and wave functions of a quantum mechanical model system. So we have our phi, our trial wave function, is equal to a linear combination sum from n equals 1 to k of some coefficient cn times some basis function phi n. Phi n are our individual basis functions. The set of all phi n's is our basis set. And our variational parameters are the linear coefficients in front of these basis functions. So the first derivative with respect to each of these individual variational parameters must be equal to zero for every single variational parameter. Our energy of our trial wave function, our approximate wave function, is equal to the expectation value of the Hamiltonian divided by the normalization integral. So the integral over all space of phi star times Hamiltonian operator acting on phi divided by the integral over all space of phi star times phi. If you already know that it's normalized, you don't have to do this bottom, but we generally don't know that, so generally we do need to do the denominator as well. We derived in the previous video that this solving for the minimum energy in a wave function of this type give rise to the matrix Schrodinger equation, HC equals ESC, where the elements of this Hamiltonian matrix are equal to the HIJ integrals, integral over all space of phi star i Hamiltonian acting on phi j, where those are all the all possible combinations of basis functions. And the overlap matrix whose elements Sij are equal to the overlap integrals, integral over all space of phi star i phi j. To solve this for our energies, we solve the secular determinant equation a Hamiltonian matrix minus energy times overlap matrix determinant of that resulting matrix is equal to zero. So there's where we'll start for this video and we'll continue on and derive uh, and some interesting results for the two by two case. So our trial wave function is going to be a, combina a linear combination of two basis functions c1 times phi1 plus c2 times phi2. C1 and C2 are both going to be real numbers, uh, as are phi1 and phi2 going to be real functions for all values of x. All right, we're also going to assume that we have an orthonormal basis set. We're going to assume that Sij is equal to Kronecker delta Ij. If I equals j, this is going to be 1. We have a normalized wave function. If I is not equal to j, this is going to be equal to 0. We have orthogonal basis functions. So together they are orthogonal and normalized, orthonormal. So we can write out our the elements of our secular determinant, h11 minus es11, h12 minus es12, h21 minus es21, h22 minus es22. So the additional criterion that we're going to assume that our basis set is orthonormal allows us to cancel out a lot of these s elements. S11 is 1, 1 equals 1. S22 equals 1, S12 equals 0, and S21 equals 0. So this simplifies our determinant equation to H11 minus E, H12, H12 times H22 minus E. I've also substituted in the fact that H12 equals H21 because the Hamiltonian is a Hermitian operator. All right, so now we need to solve this determinant for it equaling zero. So for a two by two determinant, we do top left times bottom right minus top right times bottom left. Uh, for a three by three and any bigger determinant, it gets more complicated than that. But for a two by two, it's nice and simple. So we have H11 minus E times H22 minus E. Then minus H12 squared equals zero. So I'll turn this around into a quadratic polynomial in terms of e. So when I FOIL this out and factor terms, I get e squared plus minus h11 minus h22 times e plus h11 h22 minus h12 squared equals 0. 
Now I'm going to use the quadratic formula on this. A equals 1, B equals this, C equals this. Quadratic formula, x equals minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So that's h11 plus h22, switch the negative sign now, plus or minus h11 plus h22 squared, so minus or positive doesn't matter there, I'm squaring it, minus 4, h11 minus, or sorry, 4 times 1, times h11 h22 minus h12 squared over 2 times 1. So simplifying inside the radicand, I'm going to square this and distribute out there. h11 squared plus 2 h11 h22 plus h22 squared minus 4 h11 h22 plus 4 h12 squared. We have a 2H11H22 there and a minus 4H11H22 there. This one gets canceled out. The coefficient left over is a minus 2. So this, if we take this and refactor it, now we have H12, H11 squared minus 2H11H22 plus H22 squared, which is H11 minus H22 squared. And what's left over is a plus 4H12 squared. So what I can do is factor this again in the following way. We're going to take this 2 in the denominator and, and turn it, we're going to factor it out and distribute it to all these terms. h11 plus h22 over 2 plus or minus, there's a, there's a 4 that we can factor out of this radicand. I'll do 4 times h11 minus h22 over 2 plus h12 squared. So I factor out a 4. It gets the square root taken, gives us a 2, which cancels out the denominator. So the radicand becomes plus or minus square root of h11 minus h22 over 2 squared plus h12 squared. So this is our nice final expression for our energy. Notice that we have two basis functions and we have two energies. So however many basis functions we put into our trial wave function, that's how many st solutions, that's how many states we should get back out. So two, two functions in, two energies and two orbitals, or two energies and two wave functions back out. This first term, h11 plus h22 over 2, that's the average of h11 and h22. So h11, if these basis functions are orthonormal, that's the energy of state 1, of phi 1. H22 is the energy of phi 2. So this, e, this term here in green is the average of those two states. H11 has a certain energy, H22 has another. This term is the average of those two states. Then to get our two states, we do plus or minus this radicand, and it has two components to it. So the first part is H11 minus H22 over 2. That value is half the difference between H11 and H22. So if this term were 0, what we'd have is you'd go up half the difference for the plus state minus half the difference for the minus state. So if this term weren't there, the two energies we would get would just be H11 and H22. So if H12 is 0, there's no coupling between state 1 and state 2, then we just get the energies of state 1 and state 2. They wouldn't mix at all. They'd just be individual states. So that's kind of neat. If we don't have any overlap or any coupling between our basis functions, then we just get the energy of the original basis functions themselves. But then what about this last term? This term h12 squared. So this is what we call a coupling element. In the matrix, it's a non-diagonal element. It's somewhere off the diagonal. It's the value that determines how strong h1, sorry, how strong phi1 and phi2 are coupled to one another. So if their coupling is quite weak, they only move a little bit from their reference energy states. If it's strong, they move a lot. But what is the effect here? So it takes that half difference and it adds to it quadratically, or like a Pythagorean kind of hypotenuse to it. So the bigger H12 gets, the more they're going to couple, the more the energy of our lower state is going to be below H11, the more the energy of our higher state is going to be above H12. So in the case of an orthonormal basis set for the linear variational method, 
for a two by two matrix anyway. And the absence of coupling, the energies are just the energies of the individual basis functions, but it takes coupling to make us to give us states which have an energy which is different than our trial basis functions that we start with.